There you go, guys. That was the um, the new version, the bigger version of the, uh, the adjustment blocks being made. Uh, here they are right here. I'll just show you something that shows you that I think that they are being made fairly consistently. I'll just set them up here. You line them up, and you can see straight down the holes. It may not look that right. I haven't done that good a job, job of lining them. Turn them 90 degrees, and you can still see down them. So I'm pretty confident these are very consistently made. Well, I'm not holding them consistently, I guess. Eh? But there you go. That's a much better viewpoint of it. Anyways, guys, so now I have to drill the holes in the sides for the uh, for these. And you'll notice I changed the way that these are uh, set up so that the part that's under the most stress, which is the part that's supporting this piece, is being supported. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a little bit thinner material there, but I think that that uh, is compensated for by the th extra thickness there. I'll see how well it works. If it does, it doesn't. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to change these ones out. And in retrospect, I actually regret setting up these top ones to be adjustable because it's proving to be a bit of a bitch. Um, it's binding. It was binding, and it seemed to work fine after I ran it back and forth a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, I'm not too confident about that. Um, I also decided on a different mounting strategy that I'm going to you know, take care of in a bit, which is going to be, I'm going to have the unit itself drill a whole bunch of holes at regular intervals in the deck. And, uh, and I'll just uh, use... Uh, uh, you know, self-tapping screws or, or wood screws basically into those holes, little clamps, and then I'll use uh, this stuff, this eighth inch uh, MDF as a spacer or press board, whatever this stuff is actually called, but it's the same material really. Anyways, I use this stuff as a spacer and uh, then I don't have to mess around with the uh, with the tape. And it does mean the uh, <clears throat> does mean that the uh, I'll have to put tabs in this sort of stuff, but it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so I put the uh, end pieces on, and it's probably a little bit overkill with the bolts, but uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. These are roughly twice as thick as the uh, ones that broke, which uh, it's actually kind of interesting to look at the failure mode for the, both of the ones on this end. That one was the one that obviously failed worse. This one was the one that didn't quite fail so badly. This is obviously the unsupported corner here. You can see uh, they both failed in much the same way. Shearing from that hole, whereas this would have been the bottom. So it just basically pulled this whole section that, uh, you know, what I guess you could call it had a shear point at, uh, at uh, the point where the hole was and failed out. Whereas this one did quite a bit more dramatically and actually in the same way because this also was the bottom that way. So interesting nonetheless. Okay, anyways, these are double the thickness between here and here. I put in twice as many bolts supporting on either side of this. And uh, hopefully that will be good enough for this. The only thing is I need some longer screws because I actually don't have enough space to put uh, jam nuts on these ones. So uh, we'll have to deal with that at a later date. Anyways, so I set up my uh, equipment again. And we're going to try and do another run. Run to that end, level the uh, far... Um, you know, rail, pipe, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll do uh, this side. So, as I said in the previous segment, I put these on, I put these on, and I was working my way around this thing, leveling it, and I noticed this. Quite a considerable gap here, and in case you think that the aluminum is bent, no matter which way you put it, you know, you see about approximately the same gap, so so it's uh, related to the deck. So what I did was I went out to uh, TSC and I picked up some one-inch steel angle by about a thick. I think that's what it says it is. Doesn't really matter, but in any case, it's good and stiff. And I'm going to take the deck off, use this stuff to brace both outer edges here. And uh, and that should bring it back up. I already tried it with some one and a half inch angle, just you know, pulling up on it with it, with just clamping it in the center, and it uh, went a long ways towards uh, leveling out the board. Anything after that point will have to be done by uh, surfacing the the top of the board here. 
uh, because it just it simply isn't going to be any other way to make this board a little, you know, less warped. But we'll see how it goes and I'll show you the results. Wow, that was an ordeal. I totally understand what uh, Greg Porter was saying about uh, getting singled to death. Uh, if you wonder what I'm talking about, look at his uh, last video there. And uh, he talks about that. Uh, looks a little different, doesn't it? Holy moly. Um, I was trying to adjust it yesterday, get it all level, and I just was getting just a weird non-linearity. It basically amounted to there was a significant bow in the deck, so spent today bolting up uh, some side rails to reinforce this so it wouldn't dip so bad. And now I've got it adjusted to within 15 thou. Um, this corner is about zero, this is about five, that's about 10, so then that one's about 15 thou. So I'm not going to chase it anymore. That's plenty accurate enough considering the fact that this deck, you know, the wood itself may not be, you know, uh, may not be level. In any case, oh, what an ordeal. This was a very, very, very long and frustrating day. But it's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some new pieces for this thing with it. So I'm satisfied that now it'll work well enough that I can make the new end pieces. And I believe it's accurate enough that I shouldn't need the adjusters, you know, with doing the holes all the way through. So I'm, I'm hopeful on that one. So I'll just make initially make the holes just large enough for the diameter of the pipe. I'm also going to redraw these end pieces. I'd gone over it before where I'll drop the height of these pipes down to about here. It'll be approximately a three inch drop and decrease the length of this by three inches so that I don't have, you know, nine inches of travel that I'll never use. I'll have six inches of travel that I'll likely be the maximum I would ever need to use. So. Anyways, I think the first thing I'm going to do is shut it down for today. It's, what, 6.30 right now? And it was a holiday. Well, I actually took today off. Tomorrow was a holiday up here. Regardless. So, I think I'm satisfied. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just burned out right now. I actually had to go and edit out a bit of the end of this thing because I was just uh, repeating myself. Anyways, um... You know what I'm going to do, redraw the ends, make them, and uh, we'll come back to you guys. Should be coming back tomorrow with, uh, with what I'm working on. I think I've got everything I need to remake the ends and the uprights. Just a question of drawing them. So uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. You know, I don't know what else to say. So I will let you guys go. Thanks for watching.